Biocon. In this workshop, we are going to have a thorough discussion and hands-on practice on introduction to cancer therapeutics and computational drug discovery. In this workshop, we are going to have a thorough understanding how we can identify a target, a target protein, so that we can develop a drug against that particular target, target protein in a specific cancer. In this entire workshop, you are going to understand how we can initiate our project, how we can identify new novel drug targets using various different techniques, including literature review, and how we can utilize computational drug discovery pipelines to develop new therapies for cancer treatment. I am Vukar Hanif, founder and CEO of Biocode. I am a bioinformatics scientist, a molecular oncologist, and I love to develop bioinformatics softwares and pipelines for both genomics and computational drug discovery. I love cancer genomics particularly, and I love to identify new biomarkers that can be utilized for cancer treatment. So let's have a discussion about introduction to cancer biology. Before going into the development of a drug, we need to understand the biology of a disease. And specifically in this workshop, we are going to have a discussion about cancer. So we need to understand the cancer biology before we get into the various in-depth understandings of and mechanisms of a particular disease. So cancer is a complex disease that is caused by genetic and environmental factors. Environmental factors could be UV radiation or any other particulars for particular infections, for example, viral infection, HPV, human papilloma virus can cause head and neck cancer and other various chemical or non-chemical environmental factors can eventually cause cancer. Other than that, vast majority of the cancer, cancers are caused due to genetic issues. For example, the, the cancer could be inherited from the parent or it could be developed inside a human or inside an organism over the course of their life. This is known as somatic cancers, somatic mutation, and that leads to a cancer. Those cancers that are inherited from the parents are known as germline based cancers. So these are known as germline mutations. Germline mutations are those mutations basically that arise within the reproductive cells of the organism and when they reproduce the mutations then pass down to the offspring. Somatic mutations are those mutations that occur in the course of the life and they do not occur in any reproductive cell rather in any normal tissue cell of the organism. Therefore, somatic mutations are somatic mutations and somatic cancers do not pass down to the offspring because they do, they are they are not occurring inside the reproductive cells. So cancer specifically it is an abnormal regulation of the cell that can eventually lead to uncontrolled growth. So any uncontrolled growth of any cell of any tissue can become cancerous if it is not controlled. Is a single cell has a proper mechanism. It has its lifespan that it has to govern by. And if it, if it does not govern, if it does not stay true to those revolutions and those mechanisms, then it can lead to uncontrolled growth and then eventually it becomes cancerous and continue to further grow and divide into multiple different cancer cells that eventually becomes a tumor. So over here, if you see, we have a proper tissue and in that tissue, there is a cell that has started growing uncontrollably and it is not, not being regulated by cell checkpoints or other mechanisms that are present in nature that allow the cell, allow the mechanism to make sure that the cells die when their time reaches and if they don't die then there are various different immune responses that can be generated to basically eradicate that cell from the tissue but somehow the cells can evade which we will discuss further on so a single cell that has now that is not that is now not staying true, the, true to the mechanism it can lead to multiple divisions and become a proper cancerous benign tissue and then from there it can then metastase and become a proper metastatic cancerous tissue as you can see and it can evolve, progress into various different subtypes of the cancer various different tissues lymphatic nodes of the organism as well so 
cancer cells have altered cellular processes basically what happens in the cancerous cells as compared to the normal cell is that there are some pathways some biological processes inside a cancerous cells that are dysregulated that are altered that are aberrant due to mutations or epigenetic changes mutations can be a subtle change for example amino acid a has changed into for amino acid r has changed into m methionine and that leads to a change in the structure of the protein and of, of course it leads to a cascade of different pathways that are now dysregulated the other changes are epigenetic changes these changes can make sure that which genes are to be expressed which genes are to be transcribed which genes are to be not transcribed and this can lead to a dysregulated cellular process of a single cell which eventually makes it uncontrollable through the mechanism that are present in the nature that make sure that cells die and they don't grow out of their particular mechanism so understanding cancer biology at the molecular and cellular level is crucial to develop effective treatments because if we don't understand the cancer biology of any specific cancer that you are working on and if you don't understand its molecular and cellular level changes you can't develop effective treatments and as you can see from this figure we can establish that one single cell that has started growth uncontrollably can eventually become a tumor that has various different subtypes because it is now evoluting it has to basically change over time to make sure that it keeps on evading the immune system so it in, in cancer biology encom encompasses range of disciplines including bioinformatics genetics biochemistry cell biology and immunology to identify various different biomarkers that can be targeted to cure a particular cancer so mechanisms that mechanisms that lead to cancer initiation progression and metastasis are studied inside cancer biology and we make utilize of wet lab techniques and dry lab techniques which includes bioinformatics techniques so interactions between cancer cells and their microenvironment can also be studied for example if you see that this is a cancerous tissue there would be some cells present right beside it that are normal cells now what we can do is we can make sure we can study how these cancer cells are communicating with their microenvironment the cells that are present adjacent to the tumor these blue color cells are normal cells and we can study how these cancer cells are communicating with the normal cells to understand what sort of pathways are differentiated what sort of pathways cellular cellular processes are basically aberrant so the goal of cancer biology research is to identify new drug targets develop novel treatments for cancer and basically find a new cure the reason for that the reason to identify new and new biomarkers is that cancer eventually becomes drug resistant so we need to find out new and crucial biomarkers that can we can continue to target and continue to find new and better cures so what sort of cancers are available so there are three Overall, there are three main types of cancer, but there are overall five types of cancers, which, which were, two of them are going to discuss in the next slide. So let's discuss types of cancers. Carcinomas, sarcomas, and leukemias. Carcinomas are the most common types of cancer and they arise in the epithelial cells. As you can see in this figure, they arise in the epithelial cells. And these are those cells that line the internal and external factors, surface factors of a tissue. And if you think about your skin, the outer layer of your skin and the inside part of the outer layer of your skin is known as epithelial cells boundary. And if it can, if a person develops skin cancer, usually they develop the cancer, the cancer cells in epithelial cells. So, they can occur in many organs such as lung, breast, prostate or colon, not just in the skin but they can literally have, occur at any given position, given organ of the organism. For example, they can occur in the ducts of a lung, these are known as ductal adenocarcinomas. They can occur in the ducts of breast, they can occur in the ducts of prostate and eventually colon as well. So they, they do have the potential to metastate. They, they can metastate to the lymphoid organs and they can eventually take sites in the entire organism if a proper time is given to, for the cancer to develop. 
On the other hand, sarcomas, sarcomas are rare cancers that originate in the connective tissues, basically in those tissues that are connecting some sort of two bones, muscles or cartilage, as you can see in this figure. So at a particular position where two tissues are connecting inside a bone, muscle or cartilage, these are known as sarcomas. And these are rare, by the way, they don't occur that much. These are very rare but they do occur and they are very dangerous. Leukemias are those cancer types that occur in the blood and bone marrow and they are characterized by the development and overproduction of abnormal white blood cells. So as you can see in this figure, normal, normal blood cells, when they eventually become abnormal by the mean of they, they start developing in an uncontrollable movement, they start overproducing these white blood cells that are abnormal this is known as leukemia. So if we reiterate everything again, carcinomas are the most common types of cancer. They are arise in epithelial cells that line the body's internal and external surfaces. Sarcomas are rare cancers that originate in the connective tissues, those tissues that are connecting bones, muscles, and cartilages. Leukemias are those cancers that occur in the blood and bone marrow, and they produce abnormal white blood cells. Other, other types of cancers include lymphomas, central nervous system tumors. Cancers that arise in the lymphatic system, which is a part of the immune system basically, is known as lymphomas. Central nervous system tumors, these tumors arise in the brain and the spinal cord. So any, any cancer that occurs inside the brain, inside the skull, the, including the spinal cord, is known as central nervous system tumors. These can be benign or malignant. Usually they are benign and they are malignant when they, when they have taken a lot of time to develop over time. They are often named after the type of the cell they originate from. For example, if brain cancer occurs uh, in the astro, uh, asteroid cells, th these are known as asteroidomas. If they occur in the glioblastoma cells, they are known as glioblastoma. Lymphomas, they can be broadly classified into two categories. Hogging lymphoma and non Hogging lymphoma. So basically, lymphomas occur in those regions that are part of the immune system and then they become eventually become lymphoid cancerous. It depends upon the stages, stage one, stage two, and stage three. So over here, if you see, this is where a particular cancer has started developing. Localized, it is localized, it is not, not traveling anywhere, it is staying here, and it is present in a single organism uh, organ. Then, eventually, two or more lymphoid node regions on the same side of the diaphragm will start developing that cancer. Eventually, this will lead into other parts of the organism and becomes a stage four disease, which is widespread disease. So, before understanding the actual cancer, we need to understand the normal cellular cycle. The cell cycle is a series of events of a cell that undergoes when it, it is growing and it is dividing into two daughter cells. And each and every cell has to abide by these rules and there are different checkpoint genes present inside our body in each cell that basically govern how and when and which type of cells will grow and divide into multiple different daughter cells and when they should die, which is known as apoptosis. So the normal cell cycle is divided into interphase and the mitotic phase. Interphase is obviously divided into G1, G2 phases, S and phases, while the mitotic phase consists of mitosis and cytokinesis. These two checkpoints, G1 and G2 checkpoints, and basically these are checkpoint regions inside a cell cycle that consists of various different genes including T TP53, RB1, CDKN2A, ATM, BRCA1, and 2. Mutations in any of these genes can dysregulate the checkpoint which is G1 and G2 checkpoints and dysregulate, dysregulation of G1 and G2 checkpoints can eventually lead to cancer development. For example, BRCA1 and BRCA2 are one of the most commonly known genes for breast cancer. These are those genes that can cause breast cancer if they are mutated. 
and these are those genes that allow dna repair and they occur they they, they are present in a cell as checkpoint genes if they are themselves muted they obviously they are not going to abide by the checkpoint rules and the cell will continue to grow and won't have apoptosis when needed so the cell cycle is regulated by these checkpoint genes that ensure the cell is ready to progress and when it is ready and when it is when it is going to achieve its next stage and eventually die checkpoints are located at the end of g1 before the cell enters S phase and at the end of G2 during mitosis. So at each each individual phase when when each phase completes, there is a checkpoint gene as you can see M checkpoint. Then we have G when it when it fish, finishes this this particular phase, which is cell growth phase. G1 checkpoint is present. Then DNA synthesis, which is when it completes, there is another checkpoint. So this is how normal cellular cycle works there is obviously a lot of information that, that is present in normal cellular cycle and you should understand that if you don't understand we have attached a transcription to this video that you can read more about normal cellular cycle so abnormalities in these cellular cycles can lead to a cancer eventually multiple different types of cancers or different types of diseases as well so cell cycle checkpoints prevent abnormal cell growth they ensure necessary proteins and compare and components are present and it compares the knowledge that it has hard coded in, in the proteins that are checkpoint proteins and then coordinates with other cells and tissues in the organism to make sure that the cell cycle stays regulated failure to pass any checkpoint may result in the apoptosis of the cell or the cell cycle arrest for example imagine that a cell has started growing uncontrollably and there is some sort of issue at a one particular checkpoint region if the protein is working fine if the checkpoint protein is working fine it is going to cause apoptosis to that cell or cell cycle arrest and the cell is going to die right there and then but the issue is during various different types of cancers the checkpoint genes are themselves mutated themselves dysregulated that is why they are not able to understand when and why a particular cell has to go through an apoptosis phase these mechanisms are important for pre preventing abnormal cell growth and development of cancer because they ensure that the cells with damaged dna do not continue dividing for example if a gene has mutated inside a cell and it is going on un growing uncontrollably and it is not passing a particular checkpoint if the checkpoint genes and proteins are functioning properly it is going to ensure that the damaged cell which has a damaged dna should not grow further 